In this episode of Automower Answers, we're going to take a look at the AutoCheck 3 program. This is an essential tool for all automower dealers and technicians. This is the program that allows you to test electric motors, sensors, and other features of the mower. This is also very important to have because this is what allows you to update the software in the robotic mower. So once you log into AutoCheck 3 and you plug your mower into your computer, this is what you'll see. This is the home screen here. And as you can see, there's a whole lot of stuff going on here. But let's start at the top here with this toolbar we got. And you can see we're on the home screen. The next icon is for the auto test. And this will run through all the tests available to check out everything on the mower. This will check sensors and, and uh, other features of the mower. This is something you should do anytime you sell somebody a new mower. Before it goes out the door, you should run it through the auto test just to make sure everything's working good on it. And you can actually print that out for the customer then and give them the test results. Uh, next to that is manual test. That's where you can go in and you can say, okay, I need to test just the wheel motors. And you can pick wheel motors and just test that. Um, you need to test the, the cutting motor. You can do that. Uh, height adjustment motor. All these things, you can just do them individually. So that's a, that's a good thing to have there if you have a, an automower that's giving you some issues or you can't figure out what's going on with it. This right here will verify any hunches you might have had or give the results you need to make that warranty claim or whatever you got going on in your service department there. The next one, firmware, that is where you do all the updates. This is where you plug it in and you run them firmware updates and it's going to make some big changes. Any new features that are available, it's automatically going to load them right into the mower. Next is actions. This is where you can get in there and you can you know, reset some stuff and uh, you can you can do some other stuff, but that's really not a feature you use a whole lot, so we're not going to get on that one too much. The next one is the logbook. This one will give you all the faults and trouble that the mower has been in and, you know, in its recent history. Now, it's not going to go back to the beginning of time, but it's going to give you a good lengthy list, you know, going back maybe a month or two. Um, it's going to give you a list of all the error codes. Now, it depends on how many error codes it's had. If you've had a bunch of power outages, you know, and your, your charging station keeps flickering on and off, it's going to give you a whole lot of no loop signals or um, messages like that. So that's going to affect how many of the error messages you can see and how far back it'll go. But this is where you're going to go. If a customer brings a mower in and says, hey, my mower has been acting really weird. I don't know what's going on with it. First thing you do, go to the logbook and see what kind of problems it had. That's a great place to start. And we'll show you some of that later on here too. Next is documents. In there you click on documents and you can bring up all the manuals and all the paperwork, service bulletins, all that stuff for any of the automowers right there. Customers, this is where you sell an automower to somebody. You can put in their name, um, their address, phone number, email, all that good stuff and any notes you might have. So that's good to keep track of, you know, if something does happen to the mower, you've got their information or, you know, if, if they can't remember something or even if you want to, you know, it keeps track of the serial numbers, all that stuff. It's good to fill all that stuff in so you have record of it. Now you can see here what it tells you about the mower. We have a 450X plugged into this right now. So it's telling us the serial number. It's telling us the, um, the firmware that's currently in the mower. This is a brand new one, so it's got zero hours, zero charging cycles. It hasn't been actually out to do anything yet, so that's why the battery says uh, unknown. And here you can see it's at 49% power. Most of the time you open one of these up brand new, it's going to be about 50% battery life. So, uh, latest save. This is uh, the last time that it was actually plugged into the computer and had the... Um, had the auto check three program connected to the mower and then over here like once you save the customer information and everything that will come up here this unknown will go away and you'll see the customer's name you'll see their email address and you'll see their phone number so down here if you plug a mower in this is really important right here you plug a mower into your computer and uh, connect it to auto check three and this is going to pop up Recommended action. 
if there is any kind of a firmware update or any kind of new updates at all, this will pop up there to instantly alert you that you need to update the firmware on this malware. Then all you have to do is go over here, click update firmware, and it'll just automatically start doing it. Down here, we got the two new documents. These are, um, as they add documents and any kind of paperwork or literature about an auto mower or, you know, a specific thing going on with them, service bulletin, whatever it may be, this will tell you here that you got new documents or, you know, anything that's been going on. That updates you right there. Down here, you would fill in your dealer information. Now, of course, we didn't do that yet because we just didn't get around to it. But anyway, you would... Uh, you would fill in all your dealer information, the name, phone number, address, you know, that kind of stuff. So you plug the mower in and you see this recommended action update firmware. First thing you do, just click on update firmware. Let it do its thing just like this here. Um, you don't even have to be standing next to it. Just let it run its course. It'll tell you when it's done. Simple as that. Then once you're done with that, then you can go back in there and you can fill in the customer's name, do all those things. Um, Really, that's all it is. As far as updating firmware, just take the time to do it. You know, it's going to tell you it needs done. Just do it. Start with that. That way it's out of the way and you don't have to worry about it later. So when you go up to the customer tab, it's going to pop open a new window to allow you to add a customer. And uh, after you get everything added, you know, the name, the address, uh, phone number, all that good stuff, this is what you have here. You'll have a list of customers then. And you can search through them by first name, last name, phone number, email, um, serial number of the mower, things like that. Good thing to have. That way when you're plugging in different mowers, you know which one belongs to who and stuff like that. So always good to fill that information in. And you can see when you go back to the home screen here, there you got your customer's name, phone number, and email address. So you need to contact them. Everything's right there. You don't have to go looking up through your computer list or anything like that. Everything's right there in front of you. The document section, as we said, all kinds of options in here, all kinds of different manuals. Everything you need to know about an auto mower is in here. Service bulletins, owner's manuals, tech manuals, parts manuals, all of it. And over there on the left side, you can see you can break it down and search for specific things. So that makes everything go a lot faster. But nice to have all the information you can need right here and available while you have the mower right there plugged into your computer. Makes working on these things pretty simple. So this is a look inside the logbook of a uh, mower we had out running around as a demo and you know, just trying stuff out with it. And here you can see we have a lot of no loop messages. This is when we had it outside the loop signal. Um, you know, power was unplugged, things like that. Um, you can see right there next to um, all of the, the faults, there's a number. And if you go to your technical manual, look for that number under that fault. So if, you've, if you have a no loop signal fault and you go in there in your manual, you're looking up the no loop signal faults, go to the number two, that'll give you an idea of what this problem was here. It'll give you somewhere to start at. Same way with all these other ones here. Um, you know, go to that fault message in your manual, just look for that number, and that's your starting point. Work your way out from there. This is the auto test section. Pretty self-explanatory. You see that all these different components over here are checked off. So as soon as you hit this arrow here to start the test, it's just going to run through all of those. Now that's something you're going to want to stick around for because it's going to prompt you, you know, to close the uh, hatch and things like that, push the buttons on the keypad, but it'll run through all those tests. Pretty similar to what it did in the auto check experience program. If you're familiar with that, if you've seen that, this is the same thing right here. And of course, this is the manual test section where you can come in here and you can just pick which component you want to test. Right here, you can see you can do a wheel motor test. It'll show you results from both wheel motors. You can uh, increase and decrease the speed. And you can go down through and you can test all kinds of stuff. You see everything listed over here, the tilt sensors, ultrasonic sensors, the GPS, the cutting height motor. Uh, you can check the batteries, all of it. It can all be done right here. So you got one that comes in for a crazy problem. You know, you go to the fault codes, you get that number, go to the manual, look up that number under that fault code, and then come in here and test that component. And of course, if you go up to the top left-hand corner, you can enter in all your dealer information. Pretty self-explanatory there. So we skipped over the action section there because honestly, uh, too much information is a bad thing in the wrong hands, if you know what I mean. So we're just going to stay away from that one and 
if you know what's in there and you know how to use all that stuff, great. If not, take some training classes and, and learn what, you know, that stuff's for. Um, that brings us to another good point here. You know, there's a lot of customers that say that this should be available to them and they should have access to all this stuff. And I disagree with that 100%. And the reason I disagree with that is because you don't know what you're doing. I don't care what your experience is, what your background is. In order to use this, you have to go through the training, plain and simple. There's a protocol, you know, you can't just go in there and say, oh, well, this looks familiar, and oh, I think this is what this means. No. The company offers a warranty on this. There's a reason why they can offer a warranty on this. If everybody's just randomly plugging this thing into a computer and stuff like that, there's a lot of things that can go wrong, and then they'd be responsible for it. Or... Somebody gets their hands on this program, they plug it into their mower, and they start messing stuff up in the mower because they don't know what they're doing, but they have access to it. What's the first thing they're going to do? They're going to blame the program, they're going to blame Husqvarna, and they're going to go on the internet and bitch about the product and how terrible it is and how, how support is ter so terrible and all that kind of stuff. This is the way you maintain a decent product. You know, Not everybody's a brain surgeon. Not everybody's, you know, got access to the the latest stuff for your vehicle that you're driving. You know, it's just the way it is. You know, if you want to be able to do this, you want to have access to this stuff, become a dealer or go to work for a dealer. It's just that simple. So one other big thing we got to point out here is AutoCheck 3, as of right now, has no capability to bring up the GPS map in the mower's memory. This was something that was really cool and convenient a lot of times um, with the Auto Check Experience program. You could bring up that map and you could see that the mower was actually learning the yard. You could see that, hey, it's already been to all this area over in here, um, hasn't really learned this area yet, so we need to force it over there a little bit more. Things like that were really handy. Um, you know, customers always like to see that. They're always amazed that, oh, wow, yeah, it has everything mapped out. It's unbelievable. So hopefully someday they'll get that changed and add that feature into AutoCheck 3 to be able to look into that again. But as of right now, it's just not there. So there's two more big differences between the old AutoCheck Experience program and this new AutoCheck 3 program. The first one is you have to be connected to the internet with AutoCheck 3 to do the firmware updates. If you're having trou trouble doing firmware updates, check your internet connection, Close out of the program. Once you know you have a good internet connection, open the program back up and start all over again. That's the easiest way to solve that. The next big difference is this is not available on a disk like AutoCheck Experience was. You download this directly from the dealer portal. That means you have to be a Husqvarna dealer, an authorized dealer, to be able to log into the dealer portal, this is where you order your equipment, your parts, make warranty claims, all that stuff. You down this, download this directly from there. Then, to be able to log in to AutoCheck 3, you have to use that same username and password that you use to log in to that dealer portal. So this is why you're not going to see this get in the hands of anybody but dealers and technicians because... There is no dealer out there crazy enough to give out their login information and their password to just random customers. This is why if you want to use this or you want to see what's in here or you want access to this, you need to work for a dealer or you have to be a dealer because this is tied to your livelihood. Everything else that you do as a dealer is tied to this. So that's how they know that it's not going to be getting out there to everybody else and you know, you can't blame them. Like I said, this is, uh, this is important stuff here. You know, the integrity of the product is tied to this, so you can't blame them one bit. So all you guys that keep sending us emails saying, hey, how can I get that? Or calling us saying, hey, I, I, sh I should have a copy of that. Um, I don't have any dealers near me. Sorry, there is really nothing we can do. You know, uh, if you have an auto mower and there's no dealers around you, Maybe I'll think about becoming a dealer, you know, you'd have the market all to yourself then. Um, but, you know, un until uh, something would change for some weird reason, this is the way it is. And this is the way I see it being for quite a while to come. So 
Um, you know, no point in asking anymore how you get a hold of this if you're a customer. That's it. Get a part-time job working for a dealer or become a dealer. Those are the only two things you got. As always, we hope we were able to show you a few things here and answer a few questions for you. If you have any more questions or any comments, you know, leave a comment below the video here. Shoot us an email, automailerinfo at gmail.com. If you like this, be sure to subscribe to our channel because we've got a lot more stuff in the works. And uh, I guess we'll be talking to you soon. Thanks for watching. <laughs>